Dibley here. Today I'm going to show you how to replace um, a Nibi control unit. Um, this is uh, my second unit. Um, although it's showing that it's not actually running, um, the floor that I'm standing on is warm. So um, one of the circuits is locked open. Um, this is the second unit because the first one was replaced on uh, warranty within the two years warranty for, for my new build. Um, so I've managed to find one of these on eBay, it's a slightly different number but it looks to be the same um, and as I replace it I thought I would uh, document this as it might help someone else. Here is the new unit, um, comes boxed, comes with uh, fitting instructions so we will be using that but what we will do first of all is we'll remove the uh, existing unit and we will check on the wiring to see whether um, so we've got the, the valve common and the, the valve, the switched uh, line for the valve. We'll see whether that, uh, I presume the issue is going to be the same. Um, when the guy who came to replace it for me on my, uh, with the warranty, he said basically that switch was stuck shut regardless of, of whether the control unit was, was asking for it to be shut. So I'm assuming if I, if I check um, those two terminals, VC and VAL, they will both be live. To remove the controller, the first thing we do is you need to put a screwdriver, um, just a little flathead screwdriver, in through the little tab holes there. I've already popped this open, but as you'll see, there's, there's two little clips under there. So you poke a screwdriver in there gently, that pops the bottom of the face, face unit off, and then you can lift, lift the top off, because it locates in there. And then we can remove, we can unplug the uh, the front unit. Obviously, you should turn this off first. But before I do that, I want to check that the uh, the relay box or switch box is is failed. So I'm going to undo these two screws, lift this part of the unit out, and then put a, a um, electrical screwdriver on the terminals just to make sure that that is indeed what the issue is and why I have a warm floor. I'm going to wind out and remove. Uh, wind out these screws Oops. it is a cross head but my little little flat head fit in there quite nice I shall wind those out and that's as you can see that has released the actual um, the, the relay unit or switching unit um, so I should pull that out and then I should put a meter on on the two terminals that I've mentioned in the wiring diagram Okay, so I've gently pulled the unit out and forward. I have no idea what that bit of wire is. It's taped up. Um, I presume the original electricians have done that for some reason. Um, so I didn't see it when the guy did it, uh, when the electrician came and and it, um, did the rework, uh, replaced the original one of these. So what I'm expecting is I'm expecting to see that there will be um, that will VC will be live and valve will be live. So. That is based on the information we have here, where that is the valve, and the, the, two, the connection to it, the switch connection there, is VAL. So VC will be the, the common connection in, and valve will be the switched connection. So ideally, because the unit is not switched on, we can double check that, that there is no heating on, the VAL connection should not have any any electricity on it and if I I don't know if we'll be able to see very well I'm not sure whether it's I think it's going to be too dark to see hold on a second um, probably if I turn if I turn the light off because the light is on the settings have all gone where have they gone okay I have made sure that the uh, the light doesn't come on on the camera now right so if I connect to that one you'll see so that's the common so that should be on this one here is the switched and that shouldn't be so that indicates to me that the switch inside here has stuck on um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to label up each one of these to make sure I put them back in the right order and I'm going to swap the uh, swap the unit over and we'll try it again, but before I do that I'm going to go and switch the uh, unit off at the mains. So I've created some labels on some electrical tape that I will use to mark up 
the individual wires um, that are going to the control unit to make sure I replace them in the correct order. So I've removed the front control panel and I have now marked up all the individual um, wires to correspond to the terminals just in case I do, you know, just in case I need to take it right off. What I will do though to ensure that um, everything does stay right is as I take each individual cable off I will wire that straight into the, uh, into the new back plate. Um, so because it will be a one for one, one terminal for one terminal, this, I shouldn't have any issue anyway, but the uh, the tags are just for my own my own sort of peace of mind, and maybe for someone else in the future who may have to go in here and and rewire one of the or not rewire but replace one. Okay, so that's the new unit now wired in. Um, I used um, an insulated screwdriver on all of the terminals because although I have switched this off at the mains. I don't know if there might be some residual current in this unit or not, I don't want to take that chance. Um, I've had plenty of shocks in my life, not particularly keen on having any more. Um, so uh, I would suggest you use a, a, a insulated screwdriver yourself. I use the, um, the one that's also I use for testing, the, uh, testing whether there's current there as well. Um, so now I'm going to put the unit back into the back plate, into the back box. Um, and then connect the front face to it and switch everything back on and check if it works. Okay, so the new unit is in and as you can see it's powered up. I'm now going to go and set the timer on it and the and my program um, and uh, the, the, uh, the temperatures, the maximum minimum temperatures and I shall report back whether the floor that I am standing on when this is powered up actually loses temperature and cools down and then once I've determined that, I will put this video up onto YouTube for you all to view. Replacing the control unit did fix the issue in the floor, then did come on and go off at the correct times uh, for another year in, until uh, I left, or at least until I moved out of that flat. I'm Dibley, thank you for watching.